What's up everybody, welcome back to another Pro Guides video. My name is Nathan Ng and today I'll be giving you guys a masterclass on wave control. Being able to completely manipulate minion waves is one of the most powerful and fundamental skills that you can develop as a player, but so many people completely neglect to do so. In this guide compiled by some of the best league players in the world, I'll talk to you guys about everything that you need to know. By the time we're done, you should have a pretty good grasp on how to get the minions to do what you want, giving you a big advantage in lane and even some extra tactics that you can use later in the game. Alright, let's get on with the guide. Freezing. Small disclaimer, everything in this video is generalized information. You can apply it with just about every single champion, but the matchups are always going to affect how well and consistently you can do it. Or if you're on Tristana, you're basically forced to shove no matter what. And wave management really isn't a thing. To start things off, let's talk about the most basic style of wave management, freezing the wave. At this point, I'm pretty sure everyone understands what a freeze is. It's when the wave is set up in such a way that it's stuck in one place. It won't push to one side or the other. It's just frozen, just like my bank account. A good freeze puts you in the driver's seat during the laning phase. Have you ever asked yourself after a bad game, what am I missing? Or sought help from impatient friends? Or browsed desperately for answers that only bring up more questions? Your self-doubting days are over with Discovery, the first game-focused AI. Discovery is trained on the world's leading esports athletes to be your everyday personal coach. That's right, Discovery can help you improve your gameplay by giving you tips and strategies to take your game to the next level. Get started at ProGuides.com. So, why would you want to freeze? Let's imagine that you're playing the stronger side of a matchup, something where you really want to punish your opponent, like playing Fiora against Irelia. A lot of people in this position think the best thing to do is just force trades. I mean, if you're stronger, you gotta show them who's boss, right? But the issue with this is that when you're forcing trades, you're probably also cleaving the minions. Even if you're not, just autoing the enemy champion causes their minions to aggro to you, resulting in you shoving the wave. Even if you take a good health trade, you're now putting yourself at risk of being ganked by the enemy jungler. You're pretty unlikely to be able to fight 1v2s early on, so you probably blow sums and be forced back to base, or just die. Either way, you're losing your early lead entirely and end up being the one behind instead. Freezing can solve that issue entirely. Let's rewind a bit. Again, you're the stronger laner with a lot of pressure on your opponent. But instead of running at your opponent like a rabid koala, which <laughs> I don't know what that looks like, if you want to instead freeze the wave on your side of the lane, then that's the right play to do. You'll be able to freely farm every single minion, while your foe will typically only be able to get some melees, if that, depending on your matchup. So they end up at a gold deficit, and maybe even sometimes an EXP deficit. If they want to break the freeze, they'll have to move up and risk you going in on them. If the jungler tries to gank you when you go in on your opponent, you'll be able to retreat back to your turret a lot easier, since you already postured towards your side of the lane. The only way your foe should be able to break a freeze is by calling in their jungler to help you clear the wave. You may think that sucks for you, you worked on the freeze, but now they're here to ruin it. But really, that by itself is a huge win. If they show up on the map, the rest of your laners are safe from ganks, and they're both losing tempo and sharing XP with their counterpart, giving you a lead in another way. This may seem like a boring way to play the game by some people, but I don't know. Winning seems pretty fun, and I'd rather have a much more boring calculated win than lose to my ego. Freezing isn't just good when you're definitely the stronger one in the lane. Say you're playing Kate Zyra. Usually, such a high range lane wants to hard shove and poke their opponents under tower. But what about when you're against Tristana Leona? You can poke them pretty hard in the first couple of levels, but past that, they have deadly all-in potential, especially post 6. So rather than play and shove the wave and poke in the entire lane, you instead want to aim for a freeze right in front of your turret. You should have enough disengage power to escape if they jump in, and they can never chase because your turret is right there. Then, there's freezing to win a losing matchup. I want to point out that this is usually only done when the weaker laner is the one with the range advantage. If your foe is range or you're both melee, this isn't typically something that you can do, since you don't have anything to leverage over them. Anyway, the best classic example of this is Twisted Fate vs. Fizz. A lot of mid laners would consider this one of the absolute hardest matchups in the game. And if you're right in the middle of the lane, it is. Fizz has a ton of pressure since he can always dodge TFW with E. Post 6, it gets a million times more difficult, since he can just look to all in with his ultimate, and again, you have no way of stopping him. But what if you freeze the wave just barely outside your turret's range? Fizz's advantage would be entirely gone. Now, not only can he not trade with you, but he can't really even hit the minions to break the freeze. Fizz's E is his only AoE ability. If he uses it trying to shove, you're free to hit him with everything. If he just autos the wave and holds E for your W, you can auto him to death. Alright, that's enough about freezing. We could go on all day about how you can abuse 
use it in different matchups, but let's talk about other less in-depth ways you can use your minions to win games. Quick Bounce if you're playing a matchup where you really want to shove your opponent under their turret fast early on, one really easy way to do that is just to auto them once in the minion wave. The enemy minions will shift focus to you, while your minions keep attacking them, so you just automatically get the push advantage. Obviously, there's a bit of nuance to this. For one, this is a strategy that really only works when you're a ranged champion, or you're a melee against somebody that really can't fight back, since fighting in the wave as a melee champion is generally pretty hard early. Another thing to consider is what we talked about before with freezing. If if you mindlessly shove, you're opening yourself up for a gank. But if you do this right, you won't be stuck at the enemy turret for too long. Ideally, you get the wave to crash right as the next enemy wave is coming. This will keep their wave alive, while the wave you crash and the one that you have arriving right now will die to the turret, leading the enemy wave to bounce back to you. Slow push. Then there are times where you don't want to crash the wave too fast at all. We've probably all heard the phrase slow push before, and if not, it's exactly what it sounds like. You're trimming the wave just fast enough so that you can always have more minions, but by just a tiny bit, so the wave is slowly but surely pushing to the enemy turret. This will generally always lead to a wave bouncing back to you, since you're crashing so many minions that the next minion wave will get there before the wave is cleared, regardless of how well you time the crash. But bouncing the wave isn't the only win that you should be looking for when you get a slow push. With so many minions crashing at once, this is the perfect time to try to force a dive. Obviously, diving with even numbers usually doesn't go so well, so this is a time where you want to coordinate with your jungler. I know it can be a bit frustrating to try to coordinate in solo queue, but trust me, more people will listen than you think, so if you can just foresee a dive potential, call for the play. Even if you trade one for one, it's always a massive win, since they're losing a ridiculous amount of gold and XP to their tower, and I don't know about you, but nothing tilts me more than just dying and seeing all those minion waves just go to waste. And then the wave is just gonna bounce, so you come back to the lane just being in a great state. Mid to late game waves. So, what about once you're done with the laning phase? For some reason, approximately 94% of players, that statistic is totally real, you know, the sources, trust me. Uh, anyway, they throw out the concept of wave management once they reach the mid game point. But seriously, so many people just sort of move to farm when they see it, but don't put any thought into whether they should be less hitting, slow pushing, or shoving waves. This ends up wasting so much CS. There's so many games where waves get stuck in weird spots, and neither team sends someone to clear it out. The end result is dozens and dozens of dead minions and no one being around to actually collect all that free gold and XP. So when dealing with side waves, always be sure that you're shoving waves so they crash into the next turret. It may feel a bit risky to move up that far sometimes, but with decent vision, you shouldn't be at risk of getting caught out if you're just there long enough to clear a wave. And honestly, even without much info on the enemy's whereabouts, it's kind of a necessary risk. Ensuring that a wave bounces can literally be worth a death, so as long as that death isn't costing an objective on the map. And lastly, one of the most OP things to do with wave control is the 6th man tactic. This is when you take slow pushing to the extreme, building up an absolute massive wave that is so big that it basically has the impact of having an extra champion on your team. Yes, in this case, size does matter. Anyway, I guess you could technically do this in any lane, but it's usually both easier and more practical to do it in a side lane. The longer lane gives you more time to build up a bigger wave, and it's easy for the enemy team to clear a wave in the middle lane and rotate to other areas. So typically, you'll want to start your slow push to either your inhib or inner turrets in the top or bot lane. Sacking up a huge wave takes time, so you want to do this about a minute and a half or two minutes before the objective fight is going to happen. Just like slow pushing in the lane, you're pretty much just last hitting, trimming an extra minion or two if you really need to, so you won't lose too many minions. Eventually, you'll have three stacked waves, with the fourth on the way, and there you have it. That's your new temporary teammate. You can always use this in one of two ways. Either leave to barrel down a lane, or it can do plenty of damage to towers on its own while you group up with your team. If the enemy team ignores it, then they're missing tons of XP and gold to their turret, while the wave does tons of damage to the tower and maybe even knock it down. If someone does catch the wave, you get a free objective since you now have the numbers advantage. If your team doesn't have a great chance at 5v5ing, you can always stay with the wave. Like I said, a wave this thick does a ton of damage, so if you push with it, you can mow down a turret or even two, even in a window as short as the enemy team just taking a dragon. And that about wraps things up for our wave control guide. I hope you guys now understand just how much more you can utilize your minion waves. Anyway, thank you all so much for watching the video. I can't wait to see you guys next time, but until then, stay safe, stay healthy, and have a wonderful day. Peace.